going so uh, yeah. a very good afternoon and a warm welcome to all the doctors present here i am Debelina from planet and would like to thank all the doctors who have taken out their precious time to join in this planet session so before starting i would like to play a short video planet as you all know, Clarnet is India's largest live digital CME and a doctor-generated medical content platform, which is exclusively free for all the medical practitioners. So here is a short glimpse of Clarnet. Thank you so much, all the doctors, for your patience. Our website is www.clarnet.com. So we'll invite all the doctors to visit our website where we have lots of live sessions conducted by eminent speakers across the globe. Besides, we have made wiki services, which is medical Wikipedia for doctors only. That also you can read in your leisure time. So now without further ado, I would like to hand over the session to Dr. Prashant Karia, sir, to start with our today's session. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much. Welcome one and all to today's neonatal part seven. I, Dr. Prashant Karya, Secretary of NNF Gujarat, on behalf of NNF Gujarat, welcome one and all. And I request our President, Dr. Dipen Patel, to welcome one and all. Thank you, Dr. Prashant Bhai. We thank Clinet for providing online platform for neonatal part sala. We welcome you all on behalf of Gujarat NNF. Today we have Dr. Mohit Sahani, sir. He is a brand name for neonatal cardiology. His expertise has helped us to manage critically ill newborns. Today's lecture will help us know basics of ultrasonography, which will make us confident to use ultrasonography machine in our NICU. Thank you, sir, again for your dedication and time. Yeah, thank you, sir. Prasant Bhai. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I'm glad to inform that NNF Gujarat is the first branch, state branch, who started a focus series. So this is a second lecture in the series and we are glad that first panel discussion was a great success and today we are having a expert talk by Dr. Mohit Sani. So Dr. Mohit Sani doesn't need any introduction. He is a chief neonatologist at Nirmal Children Hospital. He is the editor-in-chief of NNF Journal and he also is a director of courses on functional eco. So without further delay, I request Dr. Mohit Sani to start today's session. Uh, the ClearNet person will be taking all attendance to the mean Zoom link, but all are requested to be muted. And if they want to ask any question, just raise your hands. Those on the YouTube and ClearNet platform can watch this and ask the questions over there also. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Prashant, Dr. Dipen. And this is a very good uh, series that NNF Gujarat who has started. So this we have been doing in piecemeal but continues any organization to have a continuous series for the, for every month, it will be a kind of trend setting. So I thank them for uh, arranging this. So last, the first uh, session was regarding what's the importance of uh, fo fo uh, focus or functional eco or point of care ultrasound. In that series, today is the lecture on the basic principles of ultrasonography because why it is important before we move on to uh, actual views and actual head ultrasound views or cardiac views, we should know the basic principles which are involved, which help us in getting these views is very important for all of us. So I will be sharing my uh, screen. Everybody can uh, see my... Yes, yes. Screen? Okay. So now you must be seeing uh, that I put a video on the slide that the bat is emitting some ultrasonic waves. They are going and hitting the insect and then the bat comes and pick that insect up. So this is the first time the basic principles of ultrasonography, the man, the human understood from this example. So there are many animal examples for this, but the most common what we see and what we replicate is what we have learned from the bat 
so it is not only the covid which the bat has given there are other many good things the covid has given uh, the bat has given to us so this is all we will be discussing today that how this thing happens and how it is being used in our day to day medical practice and you have been seeing this nefco this is academy so this is what i will uh, tell you in the end what is this nefco academy is so first and foremost thing when we go for ultrasonic waves so we should know that which part of this acoustic waves are useful for us so this is the full range spectrum of the sound waves as you can see from uh okay um this is just for the clarinet person um i cannot use the you know you know innovate that function in this dablina can you help him to annotate because if i want to draw or do something on my slides if, if it is not there double in okay uh, you continue i'll just call her on mobile yes sure so in that so the thing is one is the acoustic range that is the range which we hear our human brain can perceive and hear so that is in the range of 20 hertz to 20000 hertz so this is the range we used to hear so then we have in, infra sound that is less than 20 hertz so that is not audible and then we have uh, ultrasound the range, the range in this uh, whole spectrum that is more than 20000 hertz so that is what we call as ultrasound that is above the hearing range or acoustic range of the whole sound waves so that we use for our medical and diagnostic purposes and there are few animals which can hear that even above the range of what the humans can hear okay that ranges from 20000 hertz to 200 million hertz most of the diagnostic and medical thing medical diagnostic things can be done from 20000 hertz to 2 million hertz but anything above the 2 million hertz is basically being used as a weaponry as a destructive purposes as what we uh, see that electromagnetic waves that we see in futuristic movies so that is what is being used that is what is being used for so for us the medical and diagnostic purposes is 20000 20000 hertz to 2 million hertz the mostly this 20000 hertz to 1 or 2 million hertz is the place this is the range where we use it for the medical purposes so that is what we should remember so that is what we call as ultrasound above the range where till what the humans can hear so this is what i told you this is what the bat showed us so this is what we use in sonars we send the ultrasonic waves and then it hit you see the ultrasonic wave has come the part of it has hit the fish and it has got reflected the rest has passed hence our receiver here will come to know that there is a fish at this point this much of depth so that is what is we are using in our ultrasonic machines also so that imitates that so our basic principle is an ultrasound imaging is performed by emitting a pulse that ultrasonic waves which are partly reflected from the two tissue structures okay and then they are partly transmitted ahead and few some of the waves they are reflected back which are being received by the receivers and hence it is being shown on the screen so then we need to know that why the different material why the blood looks black or uh, solid tissue looks white why it happens so it happens so because the uh, velocity one is the velocity the acoustic the ultrasonic waves at what speed they move through the different uh, tissues like their speed in liquid is different than at the speed which the sound moves in the air is different from the solid tissue or the solid organ so it is different that's why the character also changes in that medium okay so when the sound travels from one medium to the other medium the character of that medium changes when it changes the velocity also change okay 
So uh, the acoustic velocity, the velocity of this acoustic waves is constant at one five four zero meters per second. So the all the mediums which are which have the similar amount of velocity when the sound passes through them is same, then the character of the wave does not change much, and then it is useful. But suppose if you have like I, I will show you this table. You see this the velocity of the sound in air is it's the least resistant 330 meters per second water 1497 in metal it is very high resistance okay velocity has increased but for fat blood and soft tissues almost in the same range so it's almost in the same range as you can see here so therefore the practical tip that we learn from this is that what we need like why we need the water-based gels to put the probe on our uh, body when we do the ultrasound of a particular region. That is because if we won't put a ultrasound water-based gel, because as we have seen, the velocity is in the water is almost the same and impedance is almost the same as in the other uh, tissues of the body. Therefore, it will facilitate the passing of ultrasonic waves from the probe to the body. In between, if we don't use this gel, air comes in, then this medium is totally different. So it will hinder the normal same character of ultrasonic waves passage from the probe to the body. Therefore, the practical tip we get from there that we need to use a medium that should be water-based to transmit the ultrasonic waves from the probe to the body. Okay, And then the other thing is, as we have seen, the bones, the solid has, is at a totally different velocity as compared to the tissue. So this is the ultrasound picture of when we do the ultrasound of lung. Here are, uh, depicts the ribs. This is the skin, subcostal tissue, the pleura, and this is the lungs. So as you can see here after the ribs, there's total blackout. So it will not allow the ultrasonic waves to pass on. So whenever we try to do any ultrasound of heart, and the uh, other structures. So what it uh, tips we should get is that we should avoid bones. So those are the few things were the practical things we have learned from this. One, we need a water-based gel for doing an echo or sonography, avoid bones while selecting a window for any study, and to get a good acoustic window should uh, use the solid organs as liver as our window. So water-based gel, avoid bones, and use solid organs such as liver for good acoustic windows. So these are the three practical tips we have learned while understanding the one or the normal range for ultrasonic waves which are used, which we hear and what we use for the medical purposes, purposes to the velocity of the ultrasonic waves to the different mediums what information does it give to us and what practical tips we could get from that. So that is what we learn from. It. The next thing is there are different types of machines available with us. Okay. Portable machines, standalone machines, and all those machines are there. Even though there are different machines, but the basic functionality of different buttons on all the machine remains the same. So we should not be worried about that we have learned in different machine and we buy a different machine it does not matter. We should know the basic stuff so that it, it remains uniform in all, in all the machines of any make, of any company. First and foremost thing that is useful for us and that is the whole main crux of one machine, ultrasonic machine is the probe and transducer. I will discuss the various parts of the transducer. Sorry, I lost my connection. Are you able to see?
Are you able to see my screen? No, sir. Not? Are you able Not to see? Are you able to see? Sorry. Sir, we are not able to see your screen. Not able to see. Not a, yes. Now? Not yet. Abhi? नहीं सर नहीं आ रही है आवाज क्लियर है आपका बट स्क्रीन इज नॉट विजिबल आई थिंक सर कैन लीव अगेन एंड यस नाउ इट स्टार्टेड सॉरी स्टार्टेड ना ओके नाउ यू कैन सी दिस ट्रांसड्यूसर और प्रो it is emitting the ultrasonic waves which are going in mole go and enter the uh, your body you will be reflected and hence it we will it, it will do the function how it does first of all we should know the various parts of the probe the main thing in the probes are so there was a lot of this issue that issues able to see the screen hello uh sir your screen is visible now okay thank you yeah. so this is what i was showing so this is the Uh, can i have the annotate uh, this thing option in my this thing i'm not uh, able to get annotate option uh, can you use that uh, main option from your i have uh, enabled it from my it i can't see any other option so can you please try it from your end sir mm, oh it is the, it doesn't give me that uh, okay i think so for that i have to you have to make me a host i think so i don't know okay leave it then that's fine okay so in this you can see this probe probe has got different parts one is your piezoelectric crystals basically the piezoelectric crystals are the one that convert the electric waves into ultrasonic waves and when the ultrasonic waves they reflect and come back after receiving they convert the ultrasonic waves into electromagnetic electric waves and it goes into the cpu and then it shows the various structures then you have a acoustic matching layer basically it buffers is a question between the acoustic lens what the acoustic lens does it it conver it converges all the ultrasonic waves which have been produced by these piezo crystals into the particular area so it converts converges the ultrasonic waves and piezoelectric crystals convert the electric waves into the ultrasonic waves this is what it does so this is what is happening piezoelectric crystals here it converts the electric waves coming to it into ultrasonic waves that goes into the body and then comes back so basically it is the eyes piezo crystals are the eyes and the ear of the machine and this is the brain and then you go it goes and hit the organs few they will be transmitted Out and few they will be reflected back, and it is being shown. 
the way it has been shown in the screen will be black and white though they are not the color so these are 2d images in the various den uh, um, you know the uh, amount of uh, more white or more black blackness and whiteness okay so that thing depends upon the density of the tissue okay and that is when all these things get processed in the cpu in the end it has been displayed in the 2d or b mode black and white mode on the screen so so people may ask are there any side effects of the ultrasonic waves till now they have not been reported in any of the studies okay but the only thing it does that has been theoretically possible it how it heat up the tissue through which they pass okay so that's why it has been recommended not to keep a probe at the same place for more than 20 minutes okay. otherwise it will call uh, cause uh, uh, vaporization of the intracellular water and may cause harm with multiple uses and the, with the same uh, probe is been put on the same site for more than 20 minutes so various there are various type of probes one is sectoral probe where which has got a very good quality of piezo crystal one piezo crystal and hence the area of contact it needs is very small because the when the ultrasonic waves are produced they diverge out like a sector so that is known as phase array or sectoral probe this probe is being used for uh, sonography or echocardiography of the heart then we have the linear array probe the piezo crystals are been arranged in a, in a line in this probe and hence it produces a simple straight box like uh, coverage like this how the organs are seen in sectoral or phase array probe they are looked like this and then we have curvilinear probe so the piezo crystals are being put here so there are multiple piezo crystals arranged here multiple piezo crystals arranged in curvilinear probe but there is only one piezo crystal of very high quality is arranged in sectoral probe so they are almost they are they, these are the harmonic probes for echo we use these probes for superficial uh vascular uh, access or for nerve blocks and for tissue dopplers in the in the in, in the tissue in the skin or in the lung ultrasound we use the linear array probe and curvilinear probes are used for head ultrasounds and the abdominal ultrasounds so this is what the i try to do the harmonic probes now most of the probes in most of the modern machines are harmonic probes so what what, what is the difference between that because previously when we need to use a probe with different frequency we need to change the probe because they used to emit and receive only a single frequency but nowadays the probe has a range of frequencies like 2 to 8 so what they can do is when they emit the frequency of 4 okay so but they are capable of receiving and emitting in the range of 2 to 8 so what happens when the ultrasonic waves they leave the probe and go and hit the tissues they go and hit the tissues and they reflect back so when they reflect back what happens their frequency changes so that's why if your probe is capable of receiving a range the quality does not alter it remains the same so that's why most of the probe nowadays is harmonic probe so you can use a single probe for various studies without changing the probe on the machine so that is the uh, utility of this okay so this is what i have just explained to you so let uh, next thing is the range why we need a different range of the frequencies of different probe it is because that we will discuss also higher is the frequency better is the resolution but lesser is the penetration so means if you have a very small baby 800 gram so you want to do an echo for that so you need a probe with very high frequency why because the structure size the heart size in that baby will be very small so you need something which gives a very good resolution so that it that uh, that organ can be seen very clearly and nicely but on the same side we do not need to and uh, do go in the depth because the the depth of the chest depth of the preterm baby is very less so that's why for those babies to do an echo we need a free probe with high frequency because we need a better resolution but lesser depth and with the bigger babies or in adult we need a probe with a lesser frequency because we need a better penetration but we need not need need not have a good resolution because already the size of the organ, organ is pretty big as you can see in this this, this is what i am showing is the head ultrasound in head ultrasound here is the probe okay and this is the posterior part 
occipital area. So now this is 7.5 hertz probe and this is 10 hertz probe. So what you can see, you can see this area which is nearer to the probe, very clear in 10 hertz probe as compared to 7.5 hertz probe. But the far end is better seen with 7.5 probe instead of 10 hertz. So that means your nearer areas, okay, they will be much better clearly seen with high frequency probe as compared to low frequency probe. But in depth, the areas which are away from the probe is better seen in lower frequency probe as compared to the high frequency probe. So we, the high frequency probe gives you a better resolution, but a less penetration, lesser frequency probe gives you less resolution, but a better penetration. So that's why we will learn the practical tip from these points. We will come to that. So uh, the thing is, I would ask people that which probe, how if I'm doing the ultrasound of a term baby or a preterm baby, what is the frequency of the probe I would use? But before that, I should know that we have already discussed this velocity issue. That is the speed of ultrasonic waves. So that also uh, alters the quality of your uh, picture in the ultrasonic waves. Okay. So this we have already discussed and that's why we have chosen the water-based jellies. The next thing comes the frequency. Okay. In frequency, we normally see the wave. I will show you the wave which goes like this. But the sound does not travel like this light wave. Sound travels like this. So we have troughs and crests. Trough is down. That is a ray refraction equal to ray refraction. And crest is like a compression. Because the sound waves travel is like this. So we have compressions and ray refractions. So that is the frequency, how we uh, calculate the frequency. This is how the, normally the light travels. Okay. So frequency is the one wave in one cycle time in one like it's one cycle is one second so this is one wave so frequency is one in within this one cycle if we have two waves it is frequency is two hertz so this crest is equal to similar to what we have um, compression and trough is equal to what we have rarefaction so one crust and one uh, one trough and crust that is equal to one Compression ray refraction is one wave. That is a sound wave. Okay. So one hertz means one wave in one cycle, two waves in one cycle. So that is the two hertz frequency. That's how is the frequency is. Ray refraction and compressions. This is equivalent to crust and trough in the light sound. Okay. And the distance between the two, either two compressions or two radiofections, two crust or two uh, troughs. Okay, so this is what is what the wavelength is. So if you have higher the frequency, you have lesser the wavelength. Lesser is the frequency, higher is your wavelength. So, so this is what it is. Okay, just for your basic knowledge. Then we have the resolution. Okay, resolution is something. What is when we talk? It is like something like uh, what we have pixels in the camera. Okay, so it is the ability to differentiate the two points from each other. If you, if we have got nine small points like this, if we have something which has got very good resolution, I will be able to cl clearly see these all one, two, three, and three, 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 nine, nine points from each other. But if I have a low resolution, I would instead of seeing these nine points, I will see big two blots like this. So this is your low resolution. This is high resolution. So mainly we have three types of, but practically what matters is lateral and axial resolution. Okay. So if you have very good lateral and very good axial resolution, so I will be able to see all these nine points very clearly. Now suppose you have a condition in which you have a good high axial resolution. So these three lines I will be able to differentiate, but low lateral resolutions, I won't be able to differentiate these three points from each other like this. So instead of this nine, I will see three line, three points here. And if I have got high lateral resolution, 
so i will be able to make out this separate lateral one but they will be joined exactly so i will be able to see the points like this so for a better picture quality in ultrasound you should have a good high lateral and high axial resolution so the practical tips what we have learned is we have the probe with the range of 1 to 25 now 20 12 is very common now we have 15 to 20 for neonates we need a probe from 6 to 12 hertz in term baby we use for 6 from 6 to 8 hertz for echo in her ultrasound 8 to 10 hertz in preterm we use we need a probe of 8 to 10 hertz and elw from 10 to 12 hertz so with higher resolution you have lesser penetration but better resolution so we may need multiple probes so that's why we need a harmonic probe with a range of frequencies like the probe which i am using is a range of 4 to 12 so i can do term pre term echoes abdominal ultrasound head ultrasound with the same probe this is what we have already discussed so then when we do the view views there are basically the three views especially in the cardiac one is 2d or b mode this is what i've just showed you this is how it looks like then we have the dopplers in dopplers we have color doppler pulse wave doppler and continuous wave doppler and then we have m mode that is a motion mode that shows the contractility and uh, of the various structures especially in the heart and do the measurements of various structures okay this is the eco screen this we will be discussing in detail when we talk about eco one thing we should know is this is a probe marker and it always corresponds to the probe orientation marker on the screen this thing we should understand so now we can talk about few basic principles of doppler because this is another modality we use very commonly in our ultrasonography dopplers as you all know it 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 works on the doppler effect it means when a sound source is moving towards the receiver what happens the frequency is increases okay you have a positive doppler effect and when the sound source moves away from the receiver okay so that means the frequency becomes less and there is a negative doppler effect so this is how the machine perceives when the flow of the blood is moving towards the probe that is a receiver there is a positive doppler effect hence it is been shown as red when the blood flow is moving away from the probe the receiver there is a negative doppler effect and hence it is been shown as blue okay so red means towards the probe blue means away from the probe so this is your positive doppler shift and negative doppler shift this is and when this like these are the emitted waves this is the object some of them they will pass and the those that hit this object will be reflected and there is a transducer first it produces the waves and then it also receives the reflected waves and then we will know the depending upon the frequency and the uh, velocity we will come to know the will, uh, depth of that organ from the probe so what doppler does it allows us to determine the direction of the blood flow we can calculate the blood volume through that and we can calculate the pressure gradient this is all these all things we can do okay see this is produced it hit the rbcs and goes back come and again this is rbcs are moving away and then it goes and it will get tell tell the machine that whether the rbcs are moving towards or away from the probe so this is blood moving towards the probe is red moving away from the probe is blue in turbulent one is looks bra, orange or yellow and hence the term bart bart is blue away red towards uh, everybody please mute yourself thank you so what are the strategies we should apply to correct get the correct dopplers the one thing is minimize the direct difference in direction of blood flow less that means the ultrasonic waves should be parallel to the blood flow okay there is no there should not be any angle between these two because that is known as angle of insonation angle of insonation should be zero to have the exact to calculate the exact velocity of the blood uh, blood flow rbc's flow most of the machines they auto correct the angle of insonation within 20 degrees 
but if it is more than 20 degrees then you have to correct it and your and your readings will be uh, incorrect like this so blood that is moving towards the probe will be above the line or red above the line okay that is positive doppler uh, effect if it is straight like this the velocity will be okay now you see the angle of insulation in b is more than a that's why the peak velocity is decreased it is not the velocity of the rbc has decreased it is because of the angle of insulation the direction the perceived velocity has decreased and you see the angle of insulation is almost 90 degree and you see so you can say that the velocity in this vessel is less in c as compared to a but actually it is not it is the same flow but it is only the angle of insulation that is different that makes the difference and now in d condition you see it is moving away from the probe and hence it is below the line okay. above the line towards the probe away from the probe is negative deflection so that's why the basic principle is if this is your probe these are the directions of ultrasonography and this is the blood flow so if the blood flow and the ultrasonic graphic direction should be parallel to each other you can do the calculations for the uh, dopplers of the blood flow so what I'm showing this view is a pical five chamber view. This is again parastern long axis view. So if I want to calculate the uh, BSD, okay. So this interventricular septum, this is the probe, this is ultrasonic waves. They should be perpendicular to each other in order to calculate the size of any defect. In order to calculate any size, the ultrasonic wave should be perpendicular to that structure and then calculate the velocity of the blood flow the flow the direction of the flow should be parallel to the ultrasonic waves so this is the crux of the uh, these two uh, uh, slides so ties for dopplers i have already discussed pulse wave doppler continuous wave doppler and color doppler okay so in continuous wave pulse wave doppler and continuous doppler the difference is here you have a range gate so i can do the calculations of velocity of the rbcs within this gate but the limitation is the maximum velocity I can measure is two meters per second. In the continuous wave, I can measure, I cannot pinpoint the area where I can measure the velocity because it will calculate the velocity of RBCs passing through the whole this sector. And it will cal it will calculate that and it will give you the average of it. Okay. So that, that is your continuous wave and the pulse wave doppler. So anytime we are doing any ultrasound, we should not forget then environment in which the baby is lying should be warm wash your hands clean the transducer either with a sterile saline or with chlorhexidine switch off the machine proper steps when it is not in use or freeze the screen machine button careful about the foot of the probe because that is the most sensitive part baby should be handled by an expert nurse it, the gel should be sterile and warm and give either the feeding or D10 to keep the baby quiet if the baby is not on ventilator. So then comes the appropriate probe selection as we have already talked, preterm 8 to 10, term 6 to 8 hertz. 8 to 10 hertz works practically well in all the newborns. Color of the flow, red and blue as the direction of the flow, red is towards, blue is away from the probe. For calculating the Dopplers, zero angle of insulation should be our target how we appropriately set gain and depth in the in the various machines that we will discuss when we'll discuss the knobology of the machine in the next session that is next month 22nd i think so yes 22nd march continuous wave doppler we use when the uh, when the uh, this um, ultrasonic or uh, this velocity exceeds Two meters per second otherwise we can uh, calculate that use that pulse wave doppler and these things we have already discussed so this i am showing the many people from international indonesia dubai have been coming to our centers for getting an uh, eco uh, 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 training hands-on training done and we have been doing online trainings for six months courses even for physical training of one to four weeks one week to four weeks and six month online platform second batch is going on for the nefco third batch will start from july 2023 those who are interested in um, joining these eco courses 
they can either whatsapp on this number or mail on nf echo 2505 at gmail.com or on this number triple seven eight nine eight nine eight four two and we will send you all the information so i will stop here thank you very much if you have any question i am happy to take your questions please thank you Okay. In the end, I read the message and I got it. Okay. So I will stop sharing. Thank you. You can raise your hands or you can unmute. You can unmute. You can ask your question or you can write in the chat box and chat box we can answer there. And Dr. Prashant. Dr. Debelina. Uh, yes, sir, I can hear you. Uh, Dr. Prashant, can you, sir, are you there? Is there any question from at your end? Uh, sir, I cannot send any in the chat. from the audience. I would request everyone if you could share your questions. If... There are no questions yet, sir, on the okay. Zoom platform. Okay. Then I think so. We can conclude the session then. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for being there. Dr. Dipin. So, thank you, sir, very much for elaborative lecture because uh, this is a lecture which has actually, if we, revi we want to revise ultrasonography, your lecture, I think, will be very much memorable and it is available on YouTube. So we will be able to use this lecture frequently. And uh, in future also, you are going to take a series on ultrasonography, echocardiography and uh, brain also. So probably if there are questions to us, probably our students also we have, will have a chance to ask the questions. Uh, thank you, sir, again uh, for uh, giving us an opportunity to have, hear you again. Uh, I request uh, Ms. Debolina to uh, give a certificate of appreciation to Dr. Mohit Sani, sir. Deblina, do we have a certificate ready? Thank you. So, thank you, sir, again. Uh, and this is a certificate of appreciation to you for your uh, uh, brief and very important uh, presentation uh, for being an expert in neural part sala for presenting uh, part of focus series uh, that is basics of sonography. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. I thank uh, CleanNet also again for providing this beautiful platform so that everyone can learn from it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Okay. See you, sir. Thank you. Now we can close the uh, Zoom platform. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir.